Today's safety topic is fire extinguisher training and is presented by the Safety Center and W.C. Striegel Incorporated. The fire triangle is a simple model used to understand the ingredients necessary for most fires. The triangle illustrates that a fire requires three elements, heat to reach ignition, temperature, fuel or combustible material to feed the fire, and oxygen to sustain combustion. Together they produce the chemical reaction that is fire. The fire is prevented or extinguished by removing any one of the three elements. Keep fuel and ignition sources separate. A fire naturally occurs when the elements are combined in the right mixture. Fires are classified according to the type of fire that's burning. Basically, what type of material is on fire, i.e. paper, grease, electrical equipment? It's very important to understand the four different fires or fuel source classifications. Understanding this will allow you to correctly use the right fire extinguisher. If you were to use the wrong type fire extinguisher on the wrong class of fire, you may not be able to control or even extinguish the fire. Most fire extinguishers will have a picture label telling you which types of fires the extinguisher is designed to fight. For example, a simple water extinguisher might have a label like this, which means it should only be used for Class A fires, such as paper or weeds, dry grass. Different types of fire extinguishers are designed to fight different classes of fires. The three most common types of fire extinguishers are the water class A, carbon dioxide extinguishers, which are CO2, class B and C. Then you have dry chemical class ABC, uh, which is the kind that we use most here at WC Striegel. And then there's a new class called the wet chemical fire extinguisher, Class K, which is designed to fight commercial kitchen grease fires. The pressurized water fire extinguisher is a Class A fire extinguisher used on Class A fires only. We use the Indian type brand here at WC Striegel. They build pressure by using a hand pump. They generally hold about two and a half gallons and have about a 30 to 40 foot maximum effective range. Class A fire extinguishers work by cooling burning material below the ignition point, taking away the heat element from the fire. The carbon dioxide fire extinguisher, which is also sometimes filled with halon, is used around electrical components. We use them in our computer room upstairs. They have no pressure gauge. Their capacity or the volume inside them is verified by weight. These extinguishers extinguish fires by smothering the burning materials, displacing the oxygen, and thereby killing the fire. Their maximum effective range is just 3 to 8 feet. Now we come to the multi-purpose dry chemical fire extinguisher. This is the one that we use most often here at W.C. Striegel. It's a class A, B, or C. You will find it in two and a half to 20 pound canisters of ammonium phosphate pressured between 50 and 200 psi by nitrogen gas. The smaller units will last maybe eight seconds. The larger ones, the 20 pound canisters, will last about 25 seconds worth of discharge time. It has a pressure gauge to allow visual capacity check to make sure that they're still in the green uh, when you're inspecting them and they have a 5 to 20 foot maximum effective range. These extinguishers work by smothering burning materials. This separates the fuel from the oxygen in the air, basically blanketing it and smothering it from oxygen. The last fire extinguisher we're going to discuss today is used in Class K fires. It's a relatively new fire extinguisher used in commercial kitchens. It has one and a half gallons of stored pressurized PRX wet chemical agent and its discharge time is about 40 seconds with a maximum effective range of about 10 to 12 feet. This extinguisher 
fights fires by cooling and forming a foam blanket to prevent the fire from reigniting. We should all be aware of the parts of a fire extinguisher and what to look for during an inspection. First you'll see the discharge lever, discharge locking pin and seal, the discharge nozzle, the discharge orifice, the pressure gauge, the carrying handle, the data plate, and the body. Knowing the location and condition of these parts will be important during an inspection. Okay, now let's remember how to use a fire extinguisher. If you can remember this easy acronym, you'll have no problem using the fire extinguisher. The acronym is PASS. First, P, pull the pin. Then A, aim the nozzle. The first S is squeeze the handle. The second S is sweep side to side at the base of the fire. PASS. Remember, the first letter in the acronym is P for PASS, which stands for Pull the Pin. This will allow you to discharge the fire extinguisher. The pin prevents the fire extinguisher from being accidentally discharged by squeezing the handle. Next, we will aim at the base of the fire, preferably about six inches below or under the fuel to keep from blowing or scattering the fuel around. However, if you aim at the flames, the extinguishing agent will fly right through without stopping the fire. So aim at the base of the fire. Now, squeeze the top of the handle. Squeezing the handle opens a valve that releases the pressurized extinguishing agent from the fire extinguisher. Then the last S for pass is sweep from side to side until the fire is completely out. Start using the fire extinguisher from a safe distance, six to eight feet away, then slowly move forward if possible. Once the fire is out, keep an eye on the area in case it reignites. Please remember these guidelines for fighting fires. Fires can be very dangerous and you should always be certain that you will not endanger yourself or others when attempting to put out a fire. For this reason, when a fire is discovered, number one, Assist any person in immediate danger to safety, if it can be accomplished without risk to yourself. Do not put yourself in danger too. Number two, call 911 or activate building fire alarm. The fire alarm will notify other people in the surrounding area of the danger so that they might evacuate that area. If the fire is small and only after having done these two things, may you attempt to use an extinguisher to put it out. Before deciding to fight the fire, keep these things in mind. Know what's burning. If you don't know what's burning, you won't know what kind of fire extinguisher to use. Even if you have an ABC fire extinguisher, there may be something in the fire that's going to explode or produce toxic fumes. Chances are you will know what's burning or at least have a pretty good idea. But if you don't, let the fire department handle it. Is the fire spreading rapidly beyond the point of where it started? The time to use a fire extinguisher is at the beginning stages of the fire. If the fire is already spreading quickly, it's best to simply evacuate the building. As you evacuate the building, close the door, if there is one, behind you as you leave. This will help to slow down the spread of smoke and fire. I have one final rule for you to consider, and that is to always position yourself with an exit or means of escape at your back before you attempt to use a fire extinguisher or to put out a fire. In case the fire extinguisher malfunctions or something unexpected happens, you need to be able to get out quickly. You don't want to become trapped and become another victim.